In this section, we're going to be talking about another mainstay of NLP, which is parts integration. Now, you'll find a lot of clients and people in general, at one time or another, definitely feel in conflict. And when you're feeling internally in conflict, it's like there are two parts of your mind. One that perhaps uh, wants to take it easy and have more freedom whereas another part wants to work hard and achieve something. Or maybe there's a part of you that likes to have time by themselves, but then there's a part of you that wants to go out with friends and have fun. There might be a part of you that wants to uh, live in Australia and another part that wants to live in London or UK or something like that. So often we are uh, conflicted about our differing uh, desires in different directions. And this can cause uh, inner turmoil, it can cause incongruency, and it can take us out of alignment of the purpose of which we're following. So whenever you hear uh, someone with that inner turmoil, it is a hint that there may be different parts uh, which, if you align, will create more congruency and more alignment for that person. And this is a great exercise to bring those various parts of the mind together, uh, both unconsciously and ultimately consciously as well, so we move forward in a, in a very uh, positive direction. Now, before we jump into the process of uh, parts integration, uh, let's talk about uh, parts in general. Now, there's a presupposition, of course, you may remember that we work towards bringing wholeness uh, to a person. A more contiguous system is a more powerful system. And there's also an understanding in NLP, I guess, that we weren't born with different parts. You know, we were very uh, congruent when we were babies that we just wanted to be fed or we wanted to sleep or we wanted to go to the toilet or whatever it was that we wanted when we were babies. And it was only when we uh, grew up and started uh, being offered various things uh, and you know realizing the benefits of one direction versus the other direction that we started uh, creating these parts within ourselves. Now, uh, difficult circumstances can also create parts because you may want something, but then because of a negative experience, you may fear it. So part of you wants to do it and part of you fears that. And to a large extent, um, all ideas and beliefs are essentially uh, parts. Now, this of course can be taken to an extreme where there are these parts like in multiple personality disorder where they have extreme disassociation between the parts and people will slip into one part and be that uh, persona before going back into another part. Well, to a lesser degree, this also happens with all of us when we have these parts, if we have a certain belief or we have a certain desire or we go out with our friends versus being home, we can have quite different energies, quite different personas uh, in each different part. And to a large degree, this shows that there are boundaries around each part. So we might only display a part when we're at work or when we're around a particular type of person, for example. And these boundaries are going to be a key in this parts integration because we want to break those boundaries. So now that we've talked about our parts, uh, let's have a discussion briefly how we do it and then I want to talk about the keys before we go into the actual technique. Now what we're going to do is we're going to personify the parts and we're going to bring them out on the hand. So we'll bring one on this hand and one on this hand, and together we'll try to get integration. Now, how can we bring these together? So there are two main uh, keys to this process. The first is that because we know each part has a certain set of boundaries, we need to try to break 
those boundaries so that the part becomes more available to be integrated into the whole. And secondly, we need to have some idea of where there is an overall connection so that we can integrate them. Now, we know that each part of our unconscious mind is like our faithful servant trying to do the best it can for us. And so ultimately, each part does want the best for our own person, which is usually things like happiness, peace, a joyful life, a sense of flow. And so in that, because we know that each part has our best interests at heart, and ultimately their highest intention is one, on that basis, we can bring the parts together. So that is what we're trying to do in a parts integration. Now, let's go through step by step, shall we? First of all, we need to obviously create rapport and find out the conflict that we want to help the person to integrate. Once we find the conflict, we'll talk about it as if there are two parts. Part of you wants this and part of you wants that. Now, we often refer to one part or the client will sometimes see one part as the problem part. Like part of you wants to uh, keep smoking and that's considered the problem part and part of you wants to give up smoking. Now, it's not always the case and one important thing to understand is every, there's no such thing as a demon part. Every part is trying to serve you faithfully in one way or another. It just doesn't have access to the whole wisdom which would allow it to choose perhaps a better behavior. So keep that in mind as we go forward. So we will bring one part out and you can phrase it, bring out the problem part, or you can just say, bring one of those parts out onto one of the hands. And you can let the client choose which hand, it doesn't really matter. Once it's out on the part, out on the hand, sorry, uh, we will ask the client to personify it with a VAK representation. In other words, V for visual, what does it look like? A for auditory, does it have a sound? And K for kinesthetic, what does it feel like? Is it hot or cold? Is it heavy or light? And the visual you could say, is it big or small? Now, some practitioners like to try to get you to personify into an actual person. They'll say, who does this part look like? Does it look like your mother and father? Uh, because sometimes these parts come from the influence of people. Now, I personally, uh, I'm not of that view. I tend to just have them personify the part in whatever they like. So whether it's a blob of jelly or a tree or some famous superhero, uh, whatever is uh, okay by me, as long as they've got a VAK representation of that, um, of, that, of that part. So one tip here actually before we go on is once you've got a VAK representation of it, I also like to give it a name. So you might ask, and what would this part like to be called? That way it's easy, you know, to call them, you know, Roger and Jane or whatever the two names are. Now, occasionally some people will give it a really negative name. Like you'll say, what would you like it to be called in a pile of crap or enemy? They might say, my enemy. And of course, that's not ideal because this part is part of their unconscious mind and it's trying to do its best in its own way for the whole system. So make sure you want to get them to reframe that and explain to them that this part is actually a useful part and is trying to get the best for you in its own way. So how would it like to be called? Not how you would like to name it. This part of your unconscious mind, how would it like to be called? Now, once we have that representation, it helps us then to see it differently and we're going to talk to it and in particular, what we want to know is the highest intention. Of course, what we want to do is get to understand that that part's intention is the highest intention, the good for all of us. But we want to go one step at a time. And the reason we want to do that is because we want to break through the boundary. So <clears throat> let's say that part of us uh, wants to stay in 
our current job which we don't like. And the other part of us uh, wants to become an NLP practitioner or an NLP coach or something like that. So you would start ask, what is the intention of staying in that job? Well, it's obviously to get the money in. Why do you need the money? Well, to support uh, myself and my family. And you'll ask, what is the intention of that? And you might end up, well, I want to feel safe. I want security. And then you will ask again to chunk up even higher, you see? So we're really going to keep chunking up to a higher and higher or a deeper and deeper intention. Now, at some point, they'll start to think, well, I don't know, just security. Well, it's to be able to, you know, provide for my family and things like that. And so you'll see here that they've just gone back down to a lower chunk, something that they said before. And that's typical of someone that's hit the boundary of their, that part. So that all that part knows is I've got to work to create a safety net for me and my family. And it doesn't think outside of that boundary bit. We want to push through it. So why do you want security and safety? I mean, so what? What is in it for you? And you might have to push very hard, but over time they will have an epiphany and they'll go, well, because safety allows me to feel happy or joyful or in flow or something like that. And that's when you've broken through the boundary. Now you want to keep chunking up a couple more times if possible. They might say, well, if you have flow, what would that give you? And by the way, that's another great question. Instead of saying, for what purpose, what's the intention, uh, you can say, if you had security for your family and you had enough money in coming in, what would that give you is another way to get the higher intention. So we can ask for a chunk up in several different ways. And they might say, well, if I have a sense of uh, joy and flow, then I will feel more peaceful. And if I feel more peaceful, I'll feel more happy. So there you go. So that's now chunked up a couple more uh, layers above that boundary. Once that's done, you'll bring the other part onto the hand and you'll do exactly the same thing. So this part of you that wants to be, let's say, an NLP practitioner, what is that one? Well, that's trying to get excitement or a sense of fulfillment. And this one might chunk up fairly uh, more easily through the boundary. So what? What do you want excitement or uh, fulfillment for? Oh, well because that'll make me have a sense of flow or a sense of happiness, um, joy, and that'll bring me peace. And then suddenly you've got both parts which are both chunked up through their boundaries and they've suddenly met at happiness or joy or peace or whatever your client has said, which is the same, same thing. And this will 99% of the time, they'll actually always get to the same word. Now, it's on that basis that we can start to integrate. So now we have our client, which has both parts on two hands, which are, by the way, up here, not resting on their elbows, and they're getting very heavy at this stage. Uh, so that's just a little trick to keep in mind, because when they're getting heavy, they're going to want to sort of drop their hands. And what we want is for those parts to come together. So they're instinctively want to, going to want to bring them together anyway, but because they have the highest intention, come together and form a single part which is looking at satisfying the highest intention of both of those parts. And you might say something like this, oh wow, both of these parts seem to have the, the same highest intention. Did you know that? Isn't that amazing? So you'll act all surprised. And you'll say, wouldn't it be better if these parts came together and worked together to get that joint highest intention? And I notice that your hands are already starting to come together. Isn't that amazing? Because they will start coming together in nine times out of 10. And so as they come together, allow them to integrate those parts together to form one part. You can imagine you can call it a super part. Imagine them integrating one super part. 
and have those two parts of the unconscious mind come together. And now the final step is to bring that combined part into the heart and combine with all other parts of our nervous system and our mind. And this can have a very profound effect on people. Don't be surprised if people, you know, have, you know, a moment of tears or a profound uh, quiet moment where they integrate that. And what I've also found in this process is that integration often can take uh, two or three days. So people might even feel a little bit discombobulated or a bit out of it for uh, some maybe just minutes or maybe hours or even possibly a day or two uh, because what we're doing is we're actually integrating two neurological parts of the brain to sort of wire together a little bit more at the unconscious level so this can happen and that is parts integration the final step of course is to future pace as we do with pretty much all uh, NLP techniques to say uh, in the future uh, where in the olden days you might have had a conflict, a feeling of conflict, what happens now? So that's your future pace. All right, so now let's talk about some of the things uh, that might go wrong and tips to make this process more effective. Now we've covered the main steps, uh, but this is a good practice to keep in mind if you're having any trouble within this process. So first of all, the, the biggest problem, of course, is that uh, let's start off with the chunking up. Now, one of the problems that we have with chunking up is people will start to talk about what's the highest intention and they'll talk about the intention of others. So they'll say, well, you know, I want to be secure because my family wants to know that we are secure. Now, that's the intention of the family. It's not the intention of the person. So you as a therapist have to bring it back by saying something like, oh, I see that's good. So how is that um, a positive thing for you? Or what's your intention in your family being happy? Or if you were to get that, what does that get for you? So bring it back to them. Occasionally, they may also chunk up too quickly. They might say, well, I wanna keep my job. And you'll say, what's the highest intention for happiness? So they've gone right up to the highest level straight away. Now, it's too quick and it won't help the, the process work. So you just need to keep going and try to get them to chunk up one step at a time. For example, uh, you would say, well, that's good. I can see uh, that you want happiness. So how will keeping your job uh, give you or what in particular, what specifically will it give you that will lead to happiness? So try to, uh, you know, you almost got to chunk down there, uh, only chunk up one level at a time. Sometimes they chunk way out. They say, well, why do you want to keep this job? Uh, well, it contributes to world peace, <laughs> you know? So boom, they've just chunked miles out to some very abstract idea and you will bring them back to themselves. And how does that get what you what you want? So we will uh, bring them back. So that's some issues with the, with the chunking up uh, if you're doing it at that stage. Now, once you've chunked up and you've got the same word at the top, uh, the next probably biggest issue is where the parts don't want to come together. Now, uh, you can just give them time, so that often helps. And the next tip uh, would be uh, to have them talk to each other. So you would start a conversation of this part talking to this part to see how they could come to an agreement. Now, one of the things that I like to do with that is let's call them part A and part B. I will ask them, can part A find anything that part B does or any quality that part B has that will help part A get to this highest intention. You see, each part has their own qualities and their own benefits. And definitely there will be something that part B has that part A could use a little bit more of to get to his or her highest intention. 
And then likewise, you'll ask, now part B, I'd like to talk to you and I'd like you to turn and face part A and find out if there's anything that part A has that you, part B, could use to get to your highest intention. Now this is a fruitful discussion because uh, it'll help bring agreement and it'll help them, you, the person, see that each part needs each other to more quickly get to that highest intention and that can help bring the hands together. Another way is to say I'd like, the, I'd like you to imagine a super part in between or a combined part that has a bit of both or some third part which is in between. How you phrase it is up to you that they can both merge into. That's another way some people have used to do a parts integration. And then the final tip if you want to use this, I don't use it very often but you might like to, is to actually say as the parts come together or for that super part to come up with at least three new behaviours or three new actions in the next two or three weeks that this super part can do to get you or to start you on the road to achieving your highest intention. So that way you're involving some tasking into this process. So not only do they have the integration, they know what to do as well. Now, if people are struggling at the unconscious level, of course assure them that it doesn't necessarily matter what the conscious mind thinks because it's important that at the unconscious level we do this integration. So you can assure people that even just by visualizing the unconscious parts coming together and forming let's say a new color for example then we can uh, bring it inside and that will help with the integration and so that is the parts integration process a very powerful and i think a very useful part of your nlp toolkit as you go forward and use it uh, in your coaching career or wherever now, just as a final uh, conclusion, I want to say that this same process, a parts integration of chunking up to find agreement and then bringing the parts together, can be useful in any sort of area where you need agreement. So we use it to get agreement and to get integration between two parts of the same mind. But you could also use it between two people. So have two people talk about what is the common interest of both of them and how they can integrate and work together as a team. You can even use it between uh, sets of teams. Like for example, in a company, you could use it between the marketing team and the production team or sets of executives. And people do use this same process on a corporate level uh, as a facilitator to get harmony you know, within a corporation or within a company or even between companies or between countries for that matter. So anywhere where you've got two sets of opposing views, you can use this same structure to find agreement and uh, bring people together to make one cohesive team. So a fantastic process and a fantastic structure and an NLP process which I'm sure you'll get a lot of use out of. Right, so let's ask if there's any questions and if not, we'll go straight into a uh, demo to see it done live. How can I help you today? Well, basically I have a daytime me and a nighttime me. Mm. They're very different. Oh. Not very, not, you know, I am here doing this during the day and, and otherwise at work or, or, you know, trying to find, build business and for myself and all those sorts of things. But at night time, I, you know, if I've got a friend who messages me to say, let's go and have a few beers, I'm like, let's do it. Great, mm. no worries. So, I yeah, I'm pretty conflicting between what I do during the day and what I, I've got goals I want to achieve 
in one area, but then they, I feel like I keep getting dragged back to the same old behaviour. So how is that a problem? Because it's not congruent. Not congruent, not congruent to... To where, I want it, where I've made a conscious decision of where I want to go. Oh, okay. what I want to do. You have some. You, you have clearly in your mind where you want to go. Yeah. Okay. All right. So talk to me more about the daytime mark. Um, well, it's probably the one you see. Obviously, um, I, I'm generally quite a happy, um, outgoing person. Like a challenge. Like to know, learn the new things, um, and have, um, I guess, a lot of empathy for people and want to help people. Um, but at, I mean, it's not every night. But at night time, when I've when I've got a social event on or an opportunity to socialise, I won't just go and do that a little bit. Okay. So, if you had to understand clearly, if there is one part of Mark who does not want to do what, can you fill up that for me? Can you, if you had to get a statement from you, yeah, this is what I don't want. Yeah. So I don't want to continue to go out um, relying on alcohol to have a good time and staying out too late and then that sort of uh, puts a bit more of a strain on the daytime me. Well that's okay. So that part of you which you don't want is to go out and rely on alcohol and uh, yeah and just and, and like I said take it to that extreme level where I'm getting home at midnight or after oh, or okay. whatever and getting up tired and it affects the okay. person I'm Okay, so another part, what do you want? How do you want to be? I want to be happy just to go and enjoy my friends or whoever, uh, whatever social event or social situation I'm in without the need to, or without feeling like I have to stay till the last person leaves or, you know, match my best friend beer for beer or whatever. Mm. Okay. So I just want to go a little deeper in here because we are still on the surface talking about the tasks and the activities. I would like to go a little more deeper to see what's there and then we will see what's the conflict. So what is, what do you think, what, what is exactly happening underneath when you really go out for alcohol and what are you thinking in your mind? Well, I guess it's a pattern of behaviour that I have learned. Um, because I've got a lot of great memories of going out with friends. All right. Okay. So fine. So for the we can chunk up with those two things, and I think we can live with it. And let's go with it. So one part. Would you be happy if I just say that what that part of Mark, what he does not want, is to does not want to go out and consider entertainment as alcohol and beer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that's one part. Yes that you don't want yeah. and the other part is you want to still socialize and be with people and help them yeah all right okay so do you think we can work with that is it is it a reasonable part two parts of mark that we can work with yeah all right so let's start with that and see how we chunk up from there all right thank you mark so now i would like to bring that part of mark who wants to go out, we are not talking about the unwanted part, that unwanted part is it wants to go out with friends and have an alcohol and beer and consider that as entertainment. That's the unwanted behavior. And the wanted part is where you still want to go out and have friends and be there, but helping people. All right, okay. So thank you, Mark. So now if we had to bring out that unwanted part of Mark, who wants to go out with friends in the night, that nighttime mark, who wants to go out with friends and have a drink and stay there to the last minute. If you had to bring out that part of mark onto one of your hands, what would, which hand would you with that part choose to come out on that one? Okay, so I would like you to put that hand right in front of you there and see that part of mark on your palm. That part of mark who wants to go out with friends and considers entertainment as alcohol and drinks. And as you're looking at that part on your palm, do you see any image or an object? No. Okay. And if 
we have to consider now talking to the part, what would that part like to be called? Is there a name that you would like to be called? Gary. 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 <laughs> so Gary. Thank you, Gary. And uh, as you're looking at Gary, Mark, do you see, see what color? Do you see any colors around that Gary? No. Okay. And how big is Gary? That big? 50 cent okay. coin. A 50 cent coin leg, okay. And is it heavy or light? It's light. It's light, okay. And as you're looking at Gary, are there any feelings? Yeah, is it sort of a, that's why I think it's, it's that big because it's sort of tingling in that area of the palm. Okay, and as you're looking at Gary and tingling in that part of your palm, are there any feelings in your body? Do you feel anywhere? Good. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Now I would like to talk to Gary and see what's the higher intention. So let the part talk to us. Hello, Gary. And thank you for coming out for us today. What is your higher intention for Mark that you would want to go out and associate entertainment with alcohol? And stay into the last minute. What's the what's the reason behind that? That would be just to be socially accepted. Socially accepted. All right. And what does it mean for you to be socially accepted, Gary? Well, it means that people like me. People like me. All right. And what does that give Mark when people likes Mark, Gary? Bit of self-satisfaction. Extra self-satisfaction. Thank you, Gary. I really appreciate that. Thank you. So what does that extra self-satisfaction, what does that bring for Mark? Happiness. Happiness. Great. Thank you, Gary. So the higher intention of Gary in Mark is to give Mark happiness. Thank you, Gary. Now, if I had to bring the other part of Mark, who still wants to go out with friends and be there to help people. And if you can bring the other part on the other hand, thank you. And if you're looking at that part of Mark, who wants to go out and help people, and if you had to look at that part on your left palm, do you see an object or an image? And if we had to ask the part, what do you like to be called? What would be the name or do you want a name? Paul. Paul. All right. So thank you, Paul. And thanks for coming out today for us onto the left palm of Mark today. All right, Paul. So Paul, I see that you want Mark to go out and be there in social, in so, in social situations helping people instead of drinking or instead of staying behind to the last minute. So if we had to ask you, Paul, what is your... Sorry, I just skipped a step there. I'm just going back again. So Paul, so how big is Paul? Paul's a lot bigger. He's like, it's encompassing my whole hand. You know, our whole hand? Okay, and is he heavy or light? He's still light, but he's causing my little pinky to twitch. Oh, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. And are you sure, like, Paul is a he? Yeah. Ah, great. Okay. Thanks, Paul. So, and are there any colours? Purple. Purple. <laughs> because of my fingers look purple. Ah, oh, great. Okay. Thank you, Paul. And when you're looking at Paul, Mark, are there any feelings? Oh, your little pinky is really twitching. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. What's, so when you look at Paul, what do you have any feelings in your body besides the twitching in the pinky finger? I feel a bit warmer. Warmer? Yeah. And where do you feel the warmth? Uh, shoulders and neck. Shoulders and neck. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank Sorry, you. Hands, yeah. ah, Sorry. Like good. Yes. That's right. Thank you for that. Thank you, Paul, for coming out for us today. So, Paul, you are definitely there for Mark to serve something good for Mark. What is your higher intention? What is it that you want to give to Mark? Mm. 
knowledge. Knowledge, great. Thank you, Paul. So, and what is that knowledge? Through knowledge, what is it you want to give to Mark? What's the higher intention? Value. Value. And what does that value, so you want to give value to Mark? To pass on to other people. Oh, so you want Mark to add value to other people. And what does that give to Mark? That gives Mark satisfaction. Satisfaction, okay. And what does that satisfaction give to Mark? Happiness. Happiness, great. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much today for coming out and say, so you're here for your higher intention, which is to give happiness to Mark. Thank you. So now I would like to talk to Paul and Gary and let Paul and Gary talk to each other and see. So Paul, I would like to ask you, what is it that you would want to communicate to Gary as you both are here with Mark? Is there anything you want to talk to Gary now? Stop it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. And is there anything that you would you can acknowledge that Gary is also there to give happiness? Is there any other message you want to pass on to Gary that he can help Mark with? Is that he doesn't need alcohol to actually enjoy things. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for that. And also I would like to ask Gary, Gary, if there is something that you would like to talk with Paul because you both are there for giving that happiness to Mark, if there's something that you would like to communicate to Paul, what would that be? That everyone else enjoys beer and having a laugh, so why shouldn't I? All right, thank you. Okay, so just talking to Paul, Paul, is there any other thing that you would want to communicate to Gary today? Because Gary, which is that integral part of Mark, thinks that everyone else is enjoying, so why not Mark? Is there a higher intention or a purpose that you would like to give to Mark with the support of Gary? Sorry, say that again. Is there any other support? Is there anything else that you would like to give to Mark through the, with the support of Gary? Well, one of the things that we find here is that each personality has resources. So the, the bad Gary might be bad, but he actually has very, very good resources. So a question that we could ask is, does, can Paul see anything in Gary that he could use to find happiness? Okay, because Gary's got some good resources. Like, he knows how to relax. He knows how to connect to people. Now, don't want to tell him this. <laughs> <laughs> but Paul, uh, Gary has some really great resources that Paul could use to get his higher intention. Mm. Okay, so rather than communicate, you could also ask, what resources has Gary got that Paul could use to, to achieve his goal faster? So that's also yeah. another way to do it. That's true. Yeah, that's right. That's a good one. Yeah. So here what we are trying to do is we are trying to help each other acknowledge it because Paul obviously wants to say stop it to Gary, but we want them to integrate and accept each other. So we are bringing acceptance there and then we'll go on to that. All right. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Gary. So Gary, do you think, just talking to Gary and then merging what Pete has just said, is there anything else that you can help Mark with to give that happiness, but not with alcohol? And can you please help Paul to support Mark? Yeah. Thank you, Gary. So, are you happy to support Paul, that part of Mark? Yeah. Good. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for that. So now, Gary and Paul, as you can look at each other, can you see that you both exist to give happiness to Mark? Yeah. And then, as 
you are there and you have all the resources you need to help Mark to achieve his happiness, can you now come together and talk to each other? Good. My hands together. Just, just you can allow that to happen. And see if you want to come together, Paul and Gary, and support Mark. Good. That's right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Gary. We appreciate that you're here for Mark's happiness. And see if you can come together naturally and understand that you both play an equal role in Mark's life. See if you can, if your hands can come closer and closer and closer. And we'll be closer. Let it happen naturally. Mm. Don't do it by force. Just let Paul and Gary talk to each other naturally and see that they both are there for Mark's higher purpose of happiness. And see if they can come closer and closer and closer to the point where your fingers can touch each other. Closer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Gabby. Is there any resistance? I'm sure what it is. Mm, good. That's all right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Gabby, for being there. So as you are there, Paul, can you see the strengths of Gary in Mark? Yep. Good. And Paul, can you acknowledge Gary that he's there for the right reasons in Mark to give that happiness? Good. And Gary, can you look at Paul and see the strengths in Paul and see all the resources in Paul to help Mark for his happiness? Good. And see now when you acknowledge each other and appreciate each other, see if you can bring your hands together and come closer. That you can actually talk to each other and work together for Mark. All right. Come closer. Just come together naturally. I know he's struggling to come together, but I want this to happen naturally instead of creating a third image. But otherwise, I'll create one. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Gary. Just see that you both exist for higher happiness to mark. And see if you can come together and talk to each other. And see the resources and strengths in each other. Good. That's right. And as the two hands come together and they're touching each other, you begin to feel. Thank you. And as they're coming together, can you see a new object or a new person emerging in front of you? Thank you. Thank you, Paul. to be called? Mark. Mark, good. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you for that. So now, and is there, how big is Mark? He's a lot heavier than Paul and Gary. Mm. And how big? It's like, yeah, there's, a whole, there's like a whole feeling around my whole hand, both hands. Good, that's right. Thank you. And is there a colour? When you're looking at Mark? 
Good, okay. So it's Mark and there's a feeling all around your hands. And as your fingers are touching together, understand that the higher intention is happiness and integrate that togetherness into you. Taking those fingers to your heart, take them to your heart. And see the learnings and take them and absorb them into you. Thank you, Mark. And now I would want you to just look at, think about the situation where we are just future facing. We just mm -hmm. make a step, look around, come to the room, thank you. And then, okay, so now think about a phone call that you get from a friend asking for a drink or to go out in the night with this new knowledge and new awareness, what you would be doing. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll be going with different intentions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, we'll just still be having Instead of different. coming straight forward to go, oh, I'll get some beer on the way. Yeah. I'll just go and turn up. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.